1989 was probably the year most people got an NES. The NES has already been out for a few years now, but it's established itself and video games aren't going anywhere. 1989 would have been the best year to grab one because you already had a great library before and all these great new games coming out. How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here, checking out some of the games that came out for the NES in 1989. And as always, the videos are free. But if you want to support, I have an online store where I sell my own video games. I sell these hats if you need one for yourself. I wrote a book about breakfast cereal from the 80s and 90s. I even have custom nostalgic scented air fresheners like this one that smells like a 1980s arcade, complete with menthols, wood paneling, a rusty gumball machine, and spilt cola. And a lot more flavors coming soon. Check out the store. We're starting this list, NES 1989, with a game we've all played. Don't deny it. Sesame Street 1, 2, 3. That's right. You can't tell me you weren't at least curious to see what was going on with this game. The funny thing is, as far as graphics go and like special effects, they're actually very, very good. This game was made by Rare, believe it or not. Now, this is going to be simple style games. There's, uh, this one here, 1, 2, 3, has two different games on here. There's one where you kind of create these magical shapes, which has almost nothing to do with numbers. And then Astro Grover is the counting one. It's the, like, how many are there? What's going on? Again, pretty decent graphics for a Sesame Street game, but, ah, uh, you know, came out early, early, early. <laughs> 1989, as well as Bomberman. And you'll see some dates down below. That's because sometimes a lot of these games came out first for the Famicom, and then later on they would come out for the NES. And Bomberman was a classic. This was before he was like that really cute version of Bomberman that we all see today. But still, it's, it's Bomberman. It's a classic. This is the Bomberman I played. And I, I liked it. I liked it quite a bit. Star Soldier was an interesting one. Overhead shooter. I remember not liking it as much as I should have back then. I just thought it was kind of a, just a, it was just an overhead shooter. It, I think it's, I think I remember literally buying this at KB Toys and Hobby for like $19.99. So I was like, well, if it's a cheap game, it's got to be not the greatest game ever. So I kind of, I felt that way. And it shouldn't feel that way because it's actually a really great shooter. Well, Star Soldier came out early 1989 and it's it's still fun today. Oh boy, we finally get a WWF game. Now, I'm an old school wrestling fan. I mean, I was that perfect age demographic for that Hulkamania, you know, 80s rock and wrestling and all that. So finally, a WWF licensed game that I can play at home. And it has guys like Bam Bam Bigelow, my favorite wrestler back then. Well, the game itself was really terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the best thing we had going on. Well, well, what are you going to do? Oh, man, so much of us couldn't wait to play Friday the 13th. What's not to love about Friday the 13th? We get a horror-themed game for the NES. We get a horror-themed game where us as kids who are playing a video game that we weren't old enough to see in the movie theater. You know, when you think about it, the game itself didn't even have to have anything to do with the movie itself. It's almost like this game could have been something else and then someone hacked it to be like, okay, hey, now it's uh, Friday the 13th themed. Yeah, sure, whatever. And it's still pretty cool though. I mean, I liked it all right. I spent more time exploring this game instead of actually trying to beat this game or play the game. I didn't really know what I was doing, especially when I first played it. Yeah, you get the lighter, you you know, light the fireplaces, you get the clues, you know, you get the weapons and stuff like that. You gotta beat Jason. Friday the 13th goes down as a classic. A lot of people remember it as an LJN game. This game was made by Atlas. It was just published by LJN. It's a classic. Tech Mobile one of those games that's still, I, in my opinion, just as fun today as it was back in 1989. Tecmo Bowl was also the football game that even if you didn't care for football, you could still play this game and have a good time because it was that quick arcade action style football game. In fact, I bet you there's a lot of people today who are football players today playing it for real life because they found a love for football playing Tecmo Bowl. I gotta, gotta find one somewhere. Anyway, or actually they're probably retired by now just... <laughs> <laughs> how the how the age demographic works for professional players, but uh, Tech Mobile is fantastic. I, everyone always plays as the Raiders. Next time, just for fun, play as Miami. They have like their defense; they can slide tackle like five yards at a time. It's hilarious. Ultima Exodus. Now, the United States wasn't quite ready for RPGs yet, and me, who loved the Legend of Zelda, I was like, well, this could be a Legend of Zelda game, but then not quite. It's a little bit more strategy. I felt it played more like a almost like a strategical board game or something. I'm not sure. They were fun to see. I did like the fact that you could attack literally anyone. It wasn't just like, I want to attack the enemy. No, no, no. You can, you can attack townspeople if you want. Kung Fu Heroes is a game I am maniacally nostalgic for, if that makes sense. Is it the best game of all time? I'm not even going to talk about that. What I'm going to talk about is the fact that it sold cheap 
at KB Toys and Hobby. It was like $19.99. Holy moly, a game I can afford with my own money? So I bought this game, my next door neighbors bought this game, a bunch of my friends bought this game because it was a game that we could all buy. And two players simultaneous, I was always down for the couch co-op. I mean, we, of course it was couch co-op. They didn't have online modes yet back then. <laughs> And it was all right. You just go around and you can like, you know, jump around or punch the guys and stuff like that and pick up items. And sometimes there's warp zones and stuff like that to help you proceed in the game. You know, it's funny. I never beat this game. I'm going to, I'm going to beat this game on Twitch sometime soon. Marble Madness, I was curious to see as well, because like in the arcade, it uses a trackball. Then on this one, you're using the D-pad. Well, it actually plays, I think, pretty well for a, uh, for, for an NES game. Now, I always use the NES Advantage. So with a joystick, it worked out pretty well too. On a D-pad, uh, it kind of hurts my thumb a little bit to play this game <laughs> because because of how momentum works and you have to like pull back and stuff like that too. But Marble Madness, I thought it was great. Uh, I love the animation. I loved seeing the different ways you could die in this game too. You know, shatter or be dissolved, dissolved with acid and stuff like that. Marble Madness is a fun one. Ninja Gaiden, holy moly. This was the type of game when you play this game, you're like, okay, I want literally every other Nintendo game to play exactly like this game. Um, I knew this game first in the arcade. This one is completely different than the arcade. And that's a good thing. The graphics are great. The play control is great. The music's fantastic. I love the mock Coca-Cola signs. That's great. Got the boss battle. So, you know, it felt like a little bit like Castlevania to me a little bit. I was a huge fan of Castlevania, of course. And then the fact that this game had cutscenes, I was like, this game's like a movie. This game, I mean, why do we not have a Ninja Gaiden movie, like live action film or animated or something? The Adventures of Lolo. I remember seeing photos of this in magazines. Of course, we didn't have the computers. We didn't have video gameplay of what it was supposed to be like. I remember seeing photos of this in magazines, trying to wrap my head around exactly like what am I supposed to do and why is it so, why are there levels? Why is it so difficult? We can just like, I'll just pick up those things and go out through the front door. Well, I didn't realize that there's so much more going on. You had to like block things in your way and different enemies had different personality types and stuff like that. Adventures of Lolo quickly became a favorite puzzle style game for me, um, especially after renting this. I rented this at Safeway. This is back when you could like rent video games at a grocery store. Man, those were the days. Anyway, Adventures of Lolo, a favorite of mine. Amagon is a game that I can't tell if I like this or not. Every time I play this game, I'm like, I don't know if I'm supposed to like this game. I, I think I like it. I mean, it's not its not the worst game, but it's not the best game. But it's not bad. It's not that bad, but it's not bad. I don't know. It's a run and jump and shoot the other guys. Very weird that one of your major power-ups is you turn into this huge Hulk-looking thing and you, like, just give everyone, like, European uppercuts. I don't know. <laughs> this, this game's quirky. Later in 1989, we had Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Now, I saw the graphics for this game. I didn't care about that, but the box art alone was like, ooh, creepy. Okay, I gotta check this game out. Still to this day, don't have a clue what I'm doing. I have seen the Angry Video Game Nerds videos. I have seen other people play through this game. I have seen speedrunners play through this game. I've seen people stream this game on Twitch. I've seen people go through this game. I still don't know what's going on with this game. I kind of want to keep it that way. I think that's kind of fun. Fist of the North Star for the NES was my introduction to Fist of the North Star. I didn't see the anime yet. Um, in fact, when I saw the anime, I was like, oh, they have, they have an anime based on that thing. Okay, so this is apparently popular in Japan, and now here it is here. So imagine my surprise when I'm playing this NES game that has, like, one step up from Atari graphics when you can punch people in the face and their head explodes. I'm not complaining, but I certainly have a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, did I punch him and give him an aneurysm? What happened? Well, I mean, once I watched the anime, okay, I, you know, I get a little bit more now. Um, interesting to see. And I, I did like how large the characters were. Uh, I thought that was pretty fun. And this one here, we got this one. And I believe in Japan, there were like two or three of them for the Famicom. But this is, this is the only one we got. And it's probably best to keep it just this one. That was the only one we got. And props to them for still calling it Fist of the North Star. And like, like the Genesis, they had Last Battle. Well, that was Fist of the North Star. Legacy of the Wizard is a game I absolutely love. And another one of the games I don't exactly know what I'm doing. You pretty much require the instruction manual to figure out what's going on or where to go in this game. You can play as any of these characters, well, not any of these characters, one of them is like a save kind of thing, uh, or type in the password, but you have the mom, the dad, the brother and the sister, and the pet. You can play as any of them. I always liked playing as the pet because uh, you don't take damage. 
<laughs> so you can just explore a little bit more. I would love to. I, it's, it's one of those backlog games. I would love to go through and just play this game, even, even with a Game Genie or something. I just never got around to it. One of these days, I'll use a guide. I'll go through this. Um, it was just fun because a huge area to explore. You have to pick up the certain keys and then unlock the boss. And I, yes, I have typed in like the final password to just, you know, defeat the boss kind of thing. But, you know, just to explore the whole castle and everything, because only some people like, you know, some people can use different items that other ones can't. So you, there's a lot of strategy with that. Unfortunately, it doesn't tell you that in game. You need the manual to know that. Legacy of the Wizards Classic. It's one of my one of my nostalgic favorites. The music alone. Love it. Mappy Land is another favorite of mine. It looks like a kid's game. It's not. I mean, kids can play it too. Well, it's, okay, technically, I was a kid when I first played this game. <laughs> <laughs> I still like it today. How about that? Um, I was a big fan of Mappy in the arcade, and then to turn it into like a little adventure game, um, almost like a pack land in a way, where it just you know like go go through the levels and everything. But there's still the trampoline style that uh, Mappy had, as well as uh, picking up the items. It's super fun. I love Mappy Land. I will always remember Predator as the game when I, I was collecting a full set um, about ten years ago. I was collecting a full set. I had most of the games out of the way. I had most of the heavy hitters and everything. And after I had something like six hundred 20 unique games from the 678 licensed games. Predator was one of the games I just couldn't find. I, I just didn't grab. I was like, okay, well, I ended up getting it later, of course. This game, the very first level is not an easy level. It starts off with a weird enemy that you can't really do anything with. And then if you fall down here, you're pretty much boned because you get a grenade, which isn't going to help you a lot, a lot, because you can't jump over this thing. It's an interesting sort of game. And there's also another gameplay style later, like later levels where like you're just this, this giant version of yourself shooting other things to, to, uh, to battle the Predator and all that. Predator is an interesting one. It was, it was best as a rental, I think. And that was one of the best parts about 1989, was it was around this time when I started seeing video stores carrying Nintendo games also. I was like, oh, you can rent video games? Nice. Because before that, unfortunately, you had to make friends who had Nintendo systems just so you could borrow each other's games. I mean, ugh, the, the audacity. Taboo the Sixth Sense. This is that thing where it's like, oh, you like tarot cards? Here's a video game for you. It's not even a video game. It is a digital interactive something or other. This is how this kind of plays out. So you type in your name and your birthday and all that. You ask it a question. I'm gonna ask it if you will subscribe, please. It gives you a bunch of cards. It gives you the reading. Some of these readings may make sense. Of course, everything's under your own interpretation. Interesting, interesting. You choose your state. You choose how many numbers. Those are your favorite numbers and congratulations, <laughs> that's that. Okay. Guerrilla War. What a fun game this is. Uh, this is, if you liked Akari Warriors, this is a good version of Akari Warriors. This is the Akari Warriors we should have had. You take Akari Warriors, you improvise on it. Um, this could have been Akari Warrior. This could have been. This could have been Akari Warriors too, instead of the, the whatever space adventure, whatever nonsense that was. This one's really really cool. Um, you have to also save the hostages and kill the bad guys, and you can hop in the tank, and you can blow up things. And if you die, no problem. You can continue right where you left off, and unlimited continues. You can just play this game, and again, best as a rental, two player simultaneous. Grab it on a weekend, beat it with a friend. And then after that, you can play this game together. Highlight is another farce in the world of uh, Nintendo games, as far as I'm concerned, because it's another one. Uh, I saw the, the the box art, which was, eh, okay. Looked at the back of the box, and I was like, okay, well, it looks like Legend of Zelda. Not exactly like Legend of Zelda, but it looks like it could be like a Legend of Zelda type game. Perfect. I would love to play this game. And it plays nothing like that. Um, it plays like you have to crash into the things. If you hold the button down, you can attack. If you're not holding it, that's your shield. And you have to just basically bump into them, and hopefully that you're going to take their damage before they take your damage. I do know one person who actually likes this game, and props to him, he can have it. Mega Man 2, ever heard of this game? Well, if you grew up with Nintendo Power, you start with Air Man. Hold A and B so you get the birds in the background. Now we'll go over to Metal Man stage. Metal Man has cool music. It was nice because Mega Man, the first one, it was okay. Like, you know, I liked it and I, you know, I had, my friend had it, so I'd borrow his. And I liked it quite a bit. I never thought that there would be a sequel to it, though. And then when they made Mega Man 2, this was the one that really captivated, like, everyone. It's like, oh my god, this is the game. This is the one that everyone should be, should, should be playing. And then, sure, then they can go back and grab Mega Man 1 and see what that's like and everything. But sometimes, yeah, you, you invest in your own thing, man. And there's a lot of other great Nintendo games that came out before 1989 that maybe if they had a sequel, my favorite of the entire Mega Man series, every single literal Mega Man game ever made, any game that has the word Mega Man in it, this one's my favorite. Nostalgic? Yes. But I'm cool with that. 
Oh my god, Monster Party. Here's another great game. I loved me some Monster Party, still do. You got a boy with a bat, nothing wrong with that. The bosses are fun and cool and unique. Uh, the original version of this game, you may know, uh, used to feature licensed bosses. Like this one here used to have a karaoke machine in the background. They removed the karaoke thing, but the hit detection is still there, so you can still stand on top of it. And if you get a special pill, you can turn into the uh, dragon thing that can also shoot, which is nice. Things get creepy later on in this first level, complete with like... I don't know, gritty looking things or like the dogs from Invasion of the Body Snatchers. And it's just fun. At least the first little bit's fun. Some of the levels like later on are like, okay, what are you doing? I'm a huge fan of this game. I'm glad it came out. Super Dodgeball, another game I could just pick up and play and just play all the way through it anytime. Still love this game. Loved it in the, I, I first saw this in the arcade and then when it came out on the NES, I was like, okay, this is cool. This is basically the arcade version. Um, for the NES. I totally get it. The gimmick being you can also run first, and when you do that, um, your characters will have different special types of throws that they can do. But the opponents do also, so you gotta watch out for those. You can dodge them, you can, you know, catch them in the air. It's pretty fun. There's also that bean battle mode that, or the bean, whatever that other one is, where it's just like basically just, you know, like playground style. I don't know. That's, I thought it was kind of fun. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, another game you had to get because you loved the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The unfortunate thing is this game came out right when the cartoon came out. And when the cartoon came out, it was the best thing going. So then you play the NES version and you're like, it's not exactly the cartoon. And some of the characters are different. And it's, you know, like everyone on the cover all is wearing red. It's not bad. It's kind of its own thing. Just like how the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie was kind of its own thing. You really wanted one based on the cartoon. Because honestly, I have no idea how popular Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles would have ever been if it wasn't for the cartoon. I don't think it would have been as popular as it is, that's for sure. And this game, notoriously hard. It is beatable. It is beatable. You can do it. It was a time before passwords, a time before saves. Oh yeah. Here, you say it. The Adventures of Bio Billy. All right, fine. Good enough. This game could have been a lot better. The unfortunateness of when you hit them and then while they're still flashing so you can't attack them, they, they can attack you. Not fair. Not fair. So you spend most of your time just doing jump kicks everywhere, which takes forever. And you can't get either items later on, like a gun to shoot the other guys. <laughs> I did like the fact that this game took place in the bayou, has great music, great soundtrack. You can use the zapper in some of the games. There's like, you know, there's the action part, there's the driving part, there's a shooting part. That was a lot of fun. It's just, it's super hard on the US version just because of that hit detection thing with the uh, with the enemies. I still like it though. Track and Field 2, and I was a big fan of Track and Field, but liked this one even more because it had so many more events you could participate in, including like fencing, which was cool. There's like, oh yeah, there's the running and jumping. Yeah, there's the, uh, you know, the, 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 the javelin throw and, you know, swimming and stuff like that too. And again, based on the Korean Olympics, uh, they had like Taekwondo was one. Now this entire, they could have just made a whole Taekwondo video game. They could have just made a fighting game that was like this, and I would have been okay with that. And neat that they had a couple of two-player specific games too, like the Taekwondo. They even had arm wrestling. Uh, arm wrestling was a two-player specific mode in this one. I don't know, I'm still a big fan of Track and Field too. I like this one. Baseball Stars came out in 89, one of the best baseball games on the NES. Baseball games are traditionally pretty good. They're, as long as they have the same kind of setup, the same kind of controls, they're all pretty playable. And, and happy to see Baseball Stars. It was one of the better ones. Cobra Triangle is a fantastic game. I was a huge fan of uh, Gradius, which I know you're like, well, that's two different games. <laughs> but I liked the idea that you could upgrade at your own pace. You upgraded the way you want it to be upgraded. Do you want to go faster? Do you need uh, better um, aerial support? Or not aerial, what's that called? Missiles. Why is that aerial? Um, if you want to go faster, if you want your shots to work better, if you need, you know, you upgrade yourself the way you want to be upgraded depending on how long you can last until you get your next upgrade. Cobra Triangle is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Still love that game today. And the different stages have different uh, different uh, things you have to do, whether it be like, you know, race to the finish or um, or put the bombs where they're supposed to go, stuff like that. Even has bosses later on, pretty cool. Strider, huge fan of Strider in the arcade. Uh, the NES version, completely different. Uh, this one is a little bit more not Metroid, well, a little Metroidvania e kind of. Like, it's like if, if Metroidvania without all the go all the way over here, then go all the way over there, um, you just kind of go where you need to go by nature of like, I'm going to this area first, and then that's going to be a level. I'm going to go this area next, and then that's going to be a level. There's a lot going on with Strider. Hit detection sucks. Uh, the controls are a little wonky. The jumping is really wonky, um, but I still think it's a super fun game for what it is. Dragon Warrior was Nintendo's effort to say, look, we're going to start releasing RPGs, whether you like it or not. They love them in Japan. You haven't caught on yet. 
So we're gonna shove this down your throat until you start liking RPGs. In fact, you know what? We'll even give you this one for free. I already had an existing Nintendo Power subscription at this time. That was one of those like sign up bonuses. Like, hey, get a subscription to Nintendo Power. And by the way, we'll throw in a free copy of Dragon Warrior for the NES. I already had a subscription and they still sent me one. So I don't know if it was just a, if I renewed it and that was part of it, I have no idea. But I know I got one. And you know what? I liked it okay. I liked it okay. The grind, I didn't care for so much. The adventuring, uh, even the turn-based style, I'm not the biggest fan of, but it was okay with this one. Early RPG. How early? You have to use the door option to open a door. You have to use the stairs function to go down the stairs. Yeah, it's that primitive. So primitive. When you go to the shops to get antidotes in case you get poisoned, there are none because you don't get poisoned in this game. That's how old school this is. But it, it started a whole journey of a lot of RPGs and including the Dragon Warrior became Dragon Quest. Now there you have it. Faxanadu is more my style of game. Faxanadu is the type of game that's like, yeah, this is this is exactly it. That Zelda 2 style, give me that 2D action, but a little bit of RPG elements where I can upgrade my character, get better swords, get better shields. That's the kind of game that I really gravitate towards. Just make it so like when I hit my button, I slash my own sword, you right? In Faxanadu, great graphics, great story, great soundtrack. This to me seemed like what middle ages, dirty, grimy reality would be like, where people are just like, man, I don't know. <laughs> that makes sense. Not Bugs Bunny's Crazy Castle. This is the Bugs Bunny's Crazy Castle. Why? It doesn't matter. It's another game I like quite a bit. I like little puzzle games like this. Uh, you can go like uh, up and down the stairs, um, also up and down the background of the stairs to you know get you up to higher spots here. Um, collect all the carrots to move uh, on through the stages here. And you have some items and some other things that you can eliminate the other enemies with. Famously, this game came out in Japan as a Roger Rabbit game. So in Japan, you play as Roger Rabbit with the uh, weasels being the enemies, which is why you're like, why are there like three Sylvesters on screen as well? Because they had a bunch of weasels uh, for Roger Rabbit. Uh, we only had the one on the NES, but the Game Boy version, there's like three on Game Boy. And then like on Game Boy Color, there's like Mickey Mouse versions or something like that. There's a lot of these on the Game Boy, but we just got the one for the NES. It's all right. The Adventures of Dino Ricky. Okay. Well, we can do that for you. Hudson Soft, can't go wrong. It's a vertical shooter. You spin it wherever you want. Dinosaur, it doesn't matter. It's a vertical shooter. It's a vertical shooter. You can pick up your upgrades. You can attack the other enemies. I will die more falling in the water than being hit by enemies and all that. It's certainly not the best game ever. I still check it out every once in a while. I love the fact that one of your weapon upgrades or one of your like special things is you turn all super buff and you just give everyone like these Ricky Choshu clotheslines. Is that where Dino Ricky comes from? Ricky Choshu? I don't know. I think I read that somewhere. You become this giant character, and then your weapon is literally other versions of you flying out in random directions. <laughs> it's so silly. Air Fortress, man, listen, I love me some Air Fortress. Starts off with a vertical shooter. You collect uh, just some extra upgrades and items that you might need for the Air Fortress itself. And once you're in the Air Fortress itself, uh, you're on a way to destroy the core. And you do that by, you can float around a little bit. Uh, you have uh, weapons, you have these bombs that will uh, help you out a little better. Not a whole lot of like puzzle element and not a whole lot of Metroidvania E2. This first stage, a lot of easier. Uh, the later stages are much larger, much bigger and everything. You find the core, you blow it up, uh, you move on from there. I do love me some Air Fortress, came out 89. This game, however, was a game I think a lot of us wanted to play and then, sorry we did. <laughs> You know, it's funny, this game came out in 1989, so four years after Back to the Future, we get a Back to the Future game. And this game could have been a game on the Atari 2600. If this Back to the Future came out for the Atari 2600 back in 1985 or 86, 87, doesn't matter when, I think it would have been a little bit more sympathetic. It would have been like, okay, sure, it's Back to the Future because you're going around collecting clocks, sure, I get it. But by this time on the NES, we could have done a lot more with a Back to the Future game than what we got here. You're collecting the clocks, you can, I mean, it's, it's, it's rough, man, and it's, 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 it's a grind. And if you've ever been curious about the music, now the music in this game is particular because the music is super annoying. You're just like, why is that the music? Well, have you tried slowing down the music? It sounds like this. A little bit more like uh, Huey Lewis in the news, right? All right. Castle Quest. This is another one of those games, especially 1989 NES, where it seems like we're going backwards and forwards. It's like we're, we're advancing with all these great new games coming out, but then sometimes they'll release a game in 89 that's based on a game that came out in 1984 or 1985 or something like that. This is one of those games. Nothing wrong with that, you know. DuckTales is another one of those games that you're just like, you know what? This, this is what Nintendo games need to be. 
It put Capcom and Disney, and as I said, you know what? These are the kind of Nintendo games that everyone loves. The kids love them, bright, colorful graphics, based on something that they're familiar with. Uh, parents love them because they're just fun. They're still fun. And they're simple enough and challenging enough that if you play it however way you want to play it, then yes, even younger kids can actually beat this game and feel good about themselves. If you put the controller in the hand of a kid and he'd say, here's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, here's uh, Ghosts and Goblins, yeah, have fun with that frustration. This one provides enough of a challenge and you can still beat the game. And DuckTales is still one of the best. Absolute one of the best. We have Uncle Fester's Quest. Here's Fester's Quest. Um, I was a fan of this game. I love Sunsoft, love the sounds, I love the music. Um, I'm a, a big fan of the Addams Family. This came out when the movie came out. Uh, although this one is more based on like the classic Adams Family uh, series, the TV series. You get the keys and then like the different kids are behind the door, different people are behind the door to give you more items. I, I love Adams Family, I think it's a lot of fun. POW was the game that taught me what Prisoners of War meant. Uh, what POW, I, that was the first time I heard that term. And fun game, it's just, it, it, it made a great rental. You know, it's just, you know, beat up the guys and you know, go from there, I guess. I don't know, what, what, what can I say about POW? It's, it, it's a fun one. The good news is finally around this time, we get the next game to a game that we've all played and we were waiting so long. No, we're not. This is, this, we, we finally have um, Sesame Street ABCs. We had Sesame Street 1, 2, 3s. Now we have Sesame Street ABCs. We all played this game too. Don't pretend you didn't. Different styles too, like, uh, like you know, like, like finish the word. Buff. You're telling me buff isn't a word? Man, listen. Bubs, come on. Okay, so this game uh, doesn't like Wolverine either. Fine. Bun. Okay. This, this game's got Riz? No? No, no Riz for this game? Okay, well, you know. Hey, the good news is, uh, when you do a good job, you get this uh, little uh, cinematic here. All right, have fun sleeping tonight. There's also the secondary mode where you can create this kind of maze. So you, you get the rubber ducky to get to uh, to uh, Ernie's bath. That's a little creepy, but you know, whatever. Sky Shark, what a fun game this was. Um, one of my favorite memories of Sky Shark is our local Red Robin had a small arcade in the back. And one time when they turned on all the arcade machines, um, one of the arcade machines glitched out, that being Sky Shark, of course. Uh, Sky Shark glitched out and it had like a hundred credits on there. So I was like, oh, I know what I'm doing this afternoon. <laughs> So I ended up, and I didn't realize it was that way until like I went to Red Robin like later that afternoon for some reason. I, I honestly didn't even eat there. I usually just went there to play arcade games and then turn around and leave. Um, but when I saw all those credits on Sky Shark, I was like, well, here we go. So then me and then later on a couple of other people, uh, a couple of kids my age showed up and then we all just kind of took turns. And the NES version actually plays pretty well. I'm a big fan of this one. Who framed Roger Rabbit? Hey, we got it now for the NES. Uh, a lot of people have a lot of different opinions on this game. My opinion is I love this game. I, I personally like this game quite a bit. I like the fact that you can like have a huge overworld map. I thought that was like super awesome. Um, the different buildings, I know they all look the same, but you just have to check them out. And sometimes you can get items. Sometimes you can uh, you have to explore the things. You're looking for the pieces of the uh, the deed or the the note or whatever whatever that thing's called. And but you get the items by talking to people. They'll tell you if there's something that, in that building or not. And you can use those things well, for whatever you need to use those things for. And a lot of places to explore. Even if the weasels do catch up to you, you have to um, answer their jokes, which I thought was kind of fun. Very, uh, it's, it's what led me to like The Secret of Monkey Island, maybe, when it's like you have to like counter the jokes with insults and stuff like that. I don't know. I like this game. I know it's LJN, but I like this game. We had Casino Kid. Casino Kid was a pretty neat game as well. Um, I'm not the biggest uh, gambling type, to be honest with you. I know how to play the games. It's just not for me. But on a video game, eh, what, what do you got to lose? Uh, Casino Kid only had uh, Blackjack and Poker, I believe. And then it's like... That's, that's all it is. But then you can, you know, you, you work your way up, you clean off the table, and then you, you know, move to another table and, you know, clear them out as well. Godzilla came around, and what I loved about this game was the fact that you played as Godzilla. It wasn't like one of those, you know, like, for a Godzilla game, I would think like, oh, you have, you're in the town, you have to, you know, command the truth. No, no, no. You play as Godzilla, and um, that's the best part. It's very monotonous. It's a lot of the same type of stage, whipping your tail, kicking, punching, using your radiation breath and all that. You can also play as Mothra as well. If you, I, I don't, I don't, I didn't like the fact that you had to play as Mothra too. I, I wish you could have just played as Godzilla or Mothra and then beat the games that way. And but the fact that you had to play as both of them per stage, eh, whatever. Giant boss battles as well. That's always fun. Yeah, it was all right. I like this game. Ghostbusters two.
No, it's the Three Stooges. Um, another one of those games, I believe, came out for the computer first of some sort. I don't know if it was Commodore 64, I couldn't tell you. But I loved it. I just, I liked this game quite a bit. I, I liked I like any game that had multiple gameplay values to it. So like different little mini games and stuff like that. It was almost like the warrior wear of its time where you just, depending on what you land on, you have to do that task and um, hopefully build up enough money to save the orphanage. Classic. And this sound. There we go. Twin Eagle, two player on this one from Romstar. Great shooter here from Romstar here. Twin Eagle. It's it, it, just by looking at this for two seconds, you can already tell what kind of game it is. How about 720? Love this one in the arcade. Uh, the NES one, a little bit rough, I, in my opinion. A little bit harder in the NES version, but I still had to check it out because it's 720, and there's only a handful of games that feature skateboarding in them, so you always got to support those whenever you can. 1989 was when Tetris was released, and good for Tetris being released. This was the Tetris that started them all. A lot of people love the Game Boy version. Of course, the Tengen version uh, had the two-player mode, so a lot of people are like, oh, I got the Tengen version before they pulled it off shelves. I remember seeing the Tengen version on store shelves and telling my mom, hey, that's what I want for Christmas. And then Christmas rolls around, and of course they pulled all those off the shelves already. Uh, but I got this one. I got the NES one, and you know what? This NES one is super nostalgic for me. It's the one that people still play for tournaments and all that. It's 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 the perfect game. And then every once in a while we'll get a game like Dig Dug 2, just out of nowhere. And it's like, oh, here's I remember Dig Dug. And like this many years later, there's now a Dig Dug 2. Okay, well, you know it plays a little bit different too. You're on you're overground this time instead of underground. Uh, but this digging is, you can <laughs> saw off parts of the island, you know, and you can still inflate the enemies too. It's a fun game. It's pretty decent. I've beaten it once, like way back then. I was a huge fan of Wizards and Warriors, so when a sequel came out, I was really excited for it. This one plays a lot the same. The story, the action, no, I'm just kidding. I just go straight to the gambling. Um, <laughs> no, I, I told you how much I'm not a gambler. I'm not. Um, I just like that when you don't have any money, you go back in there, they kick you out. I like that it played like the original Wizards and Warriors, but still had that little bit of extra element to make it just a little bit new. So they had the magical element on here. It's pretty rough collecting the magic enough to defeat the bosses in each stage. But I did like how you can upgrade your sword, upgrade your shield, upgrade your armor. The animation in this game is fantastic. Absolutely love it. Kings of the Beach is the volleyball game that I think a lot of people played. You wouldn't think much of a volleyball game as a video game, really. I mean, it's not one of the major ones. It's not football. It's not baseball. It's not basketball. But this game plays really, really well. I liked the fact, and I mean, and because the computer kind of controls you a little bit for you, but sometimes it'll put you right where you're supposed to be, and then you hopefully you just have to hit your button on time, whether it's like a bump, set, spike, whatever the case may be. I'm a huge fan of Kings of the Beach. Love this game. I still play it every once in a while. It's fun. A lot of us wanted to check out Knight Rider as well, because like Knight Rider, you know, a huge TV show. Uh, this is now a few years later, comes out for the NES. It's like, well, I want to drive his kit. It's the coolest thing ever. And here it is, driving. You can shoot. Uh, you can jump to an extent. <laughs> yeah, Knight Rider, cool. We had RoboCop in 89. RoboCop, uh, one of the better arcade games. I loved it in the arcade. Uh, the NES version, different from that one. The arcade one was Data East. The uh, the NES one was Ocean. And it wasn't a terrible game, believe it or not. This, this game was actually pretty cool. Um, this is a game that I never had growing up, nor did I really rent or anything. So I didn't play this game until later. I was very familiar with it. Just didn't get around to it. So I'm not as nostalgic for this game as most are, but still can't deny RoboCop. Shadowgate's another fantastic, fantastic game. Um, came from the computers first and then translated, I think, extremely well to the NES. My first instance of Shadowgate, the first time I ever heard of this game, was a friend of mine was uh, telling me at school that he rented this game and told me that, um, you know, like like the text was very graphic. It was like, you, like, you plunge the sword into your thing and that this happened and all that. And it's like, you know, this... You know, it was it was just glorifying um, how uh, how wordy it was, and I was just like, I need to see this game for myself before <laughs> before anything else. And when I did, I was like, oh, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, and I still to this to this day um, absolutely love this game. And for my friend, I'm going to um, eliminate myself here, and we'll see what it says. You try to pass the slime, but it engulfs your body, dissolving it in seconds. You die instantly. No pain, no nothing. You were slimed. Oh, how cool is that? And you get the Grim Reaper, which is always cool, too. Silent Service, I'm sick of hearing about it. I love this game. I see it for uh, conventions, a dollar, 50 cents, you know. <laughs> Please take it. I I actually like this game quite a bit, and it's okay. I don't mind that it goes for cheap. They probably just made too many of them. But it's fun. I mean, I like I like the fact that you can you, 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 you go towards the guys there, and you can use your periscope to look around, and, of course, you know, shoot your things or, uh, you know, launch your torpedoes or whatever. I've never been into, like 
navy type stuff i've never been into submarines or things i mean i had torpedo run the board game i guess growing up but i don't know why but i i, do, I don't know I, I i did like this game the next three i will present as a compliment sandwich uh starting with battle of olympus now again zelda 2 loved zelda 2 you mix that with greek mythology love greek mythology you get Battle of Olympus. What a great game. What a great idea. I do like this game. It's a whole lot of olive grinding. There's no, <laughs> If you've done the game, then you know what I'm talking about, but I think it's cool. I like this one. We do have uh, Marvel's uh, Uncanny X-Men. Sure, sure, sure. Boy, this, this is a game that we all couldn't wait to play, and then uh, we couldn't wait to uh, not play it. Um, this game came out right around when uh, there was an animated X-Men feature, like uh, Pride of the X-Men or whatever. It was one that had Kitty Pride as the new student and had Toad and stuff like that. Remember that one? That, it was like an old arc, the, the old cartoon. And I don't know if they were trying for like, hey, we're going to bring X-Men to the public here by, by doing a video game and doing a cartoon. And I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. I don't know. Uh, the cartoon was great. Uh, this one, not so much. Willow then came out for the NES. Oh my God. I love Willow. Uh, Willow, one of my favorite movies of all time. And then the NES version, again, exactly my favorite style of game for this time and for most time too. There's that, that overhead, you slash your own sword, you can get your upgrades, you can get magic, um, you can um, talk to people in the town and learn what's going on, you can do the dungeons or do the castles and you know go with the story here too. I loved how when enemies were on screen, everything started to become animated and all that. When you first start out, your sword, like you're not as experienced with it, so you're pretty slow with it, but then the more you, you work it, the you know the faster you get, you know the better you get and everything. Oh man, what a, what a great game Willow is. It's been on my backlog to beat it again. It's been probably a good 25 years since I've played this from start to finish. I think it's time I need to do it again. And those were just some of the games that came out in 1989. Wait till you see what comes out in 1990. Holy moly. Well, in the meantime, I've also covered this style of video for Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis. Uh, you're talking about Nintendo 64 and more, including several other years for the NES. 